uh, what is continuous assignment, what are if case, what are uh, procedural block also we have covered little bit. That is always statement in which statements are written sequentially to realize logic. Okay. Today we are going to study more about sequential logic design in Verilog. Okay. What is sequential logic in Verilog? How do we, what are the constructs? Okay, how sequential logic uh, constructs can be used to realize combinational designs also. And uh, today we will also cover finite state machines. Okay, these are all uh, terms which, are, which you are very well versed in your uh, uh, previous studies or engineering, uh, this thing. So I assume that you know, um, from the digital design perspective, what are all these things? We will see how we can design these things in very long. Okay. So what are the things that we are going to look at are flip-flops, latches, and finite state machines. And uh, all these things have one thing in common, that is clock, okay? And what are the constructs that are uh, used to realize these uh, blocks are always and initial blocks. Okay. And uh, that is we can model them. Okay. And your synthesis tool would uh, actually convert these things into the actual flip flop counters, registers, or the sequential circuits that you have studied in your. Okay, so we have, let us visit always statement, okay? And this is the basic behavioral construct that is available, okay? And whenever we define an always statement, we have a sensitivity list followed by statements that would be executed sequentially, okay? Uh, the statements that are going to be executed will be put under begin and end, okay? They always would be, there will be a begin and end between them. You will embed all your statements that are sequentially executed. Okay. What happens whenever there is an event on in the signals that are declared here, then this always block comes into execution. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, let us uh, before going into in depth on the on the top. Let us see how do we. Uh, I realize a three bit flip flop or three flip flops. Okay. Uh, what we are doing is we have input as a clock. You know, any sequential circuit has one common input signal that is clock. The other thing is D, which is four bit long, and the output is also four bit. It output and input are vectors, right? And uh, this has been declared as reg because. Uh, it is being assigned in an always statement. Okay. Now we see that this always block is sensitive to positive edge of the clock. Okay. This is the first time we are uh, looking at this kind of thing, right? What is pause edge of the clock? That means the event, the uh, the rising of the clock is what this always block is sensitive to okay whenever the clock rise okay, maybe we can use annotations to see this is the rising edge of the clock on the day Always block is sensitive to rising edge of the, the clock. When our clock goes high, uh, the statements under the always block get executed. Okay, what is what is happening? Q is getting D. That means what? This is a particular kind of assignment statement. It is called non-blocking assigned statement, which we would see uh, very soon. And it is saying that D goes to Q. Okay, that's what we are doing. What does this mean? 
so the synthesizer would understand on the whenever the clock raises or the rising edge of the clock is seen d is assigned to q or q gets d okay So we are seeing a different assignment statement here. That is less than equal to. How we are specifying it? Q less than equal to D. What's the meaning of it? Okay, a non-block assignment. Okay, very soon we will see what's the difference between non-blocking assignment, continuous assignment, and blocking assignment. And as a rule of thumb, you please remember that all the sequential logic design would be carried out using this non-blocking assignment. What is its meaning? We shall very soon uh, look into that, okay? For time being, you note that, that we are using this non-blocking assignment to infer flops in our this thing. There are two distinct things. It is not in the event list, we are not including all the inputs. Only one input we are looking at, that is positive edge of the clock or rising edge of the clock. How we have said, pause edge. Okay, we can even say neg edge. If, if we want to uh, be sensitive to negative glowing, going clock or falling edge of the clock. Okay, so that is how we can define things. Okay, second difference is Q gets D is specified using non-blocking assignment. Okay. These two are the um, trademarks of the sequential design. You can see always there is a clocked block and there are uh, non-blocking assignments. If you see, then immediately you should understand it's a sequential logic. Okay, and this thing we have already many a times I have discussed that whenever you are assigning uh, anything inside always block that has to be declared as a register. Because all the elements, all the statements in an always block are sequential. That means they, they are assigned one after the other. So in order to remember those values, they have to be declared as a memory memory elements, right? Or the memory uh, type variables, okay? And store values. Okay, now let's go to another uh, deep flip flop. Okay, these are the general things that are used in sequential design. Okay, and uh, many a times a question would be asked how do you define this? How do you define that? Okay, uh, deep flip flop with asynchronous reset. Okay, what is asynchronous? Okay, it's not, you don't know when it is occurring. Okay, all the sequential circuits are listening to clock okay so now it has to be sensitive to reset also and reset is active low or negative edge of or the falling edge of the reset okay and uh, this is the one change we see and uh, another input that has come to the circuit is reset signal okay now your flop has active low reset and uh, what happens in the all statement let us see the behavior of it okay and at the rising edge of the clock or negative edge of the reset and if reset is zero means reset is going low then output would be zero that means you are uh, uh, output is assigned zero otherwise what we are doing when reset is not zero q is getting d Okay, R D goes to Q. It's as simple as it is. Okay, so this is pretty simple uh, description of a deep flip flop with asynchronous reset. That means reset when it occurs. You don't know that, so you will have to look for it. Whenever that reset goes to low value, you have to immediately pull output to zero. And uh, otherwise, uh, that means what? Otherwise, we 
which signal you are listening always you are listening to uh, positive edge of the clock or this to positive edge of the clock and whenever positive edge of the clock occurs q gets deep okay so this process is sensitive to rising edge of the clock and a falling edge on reset and q would be reset when reset is zero otherwise q gets t when clock is high. okay that's what this always block is sensitive to okay now let us see how do we make reset synchronous okay how are we going to make reset synchronous okay now you see uh, reset signal here input reset is not appearing in the sensitivity list okay it is gone out of sensitivity list and that means what only clock is what you are sensitive to and when clock is asserted simultaneously if this reset is zero then only you will pull q to zero otherwise you would assign q gets okay a small change but there is a lot of difference in the behavior okay in the previous this thing asynchronous signal reset is asynchronous you should be able to immediately identify what are the asynchronous signals okay clock is what it is synchronizing every sequential circuit would be synchronous to clock and the other all signals which is which it is listening are the asynchronous signal okay. now here in this you see that it is only sensitive to always block is sensitive to so uh, reset you are using here inside the always block to ensure that uh, reset is uh, not deasserted okay if reset is deasserted that means you will have to pull q to zero otherwise q gets d that is the meaning of it that is how synthesizers would synthesize this into a set of flip flops or four bit four flip flops the vector length okay let us see let us add one more signal enable okay now is it a synchronous reset it's an asynchronous reset because it has been specified in the sensitivity list very good then what if reset is low then q is getting to zero then we are not directly assigning q is not directly getting d only when enable is there only if the circuit is enabled then only q is getting d okay else if okay. otherwise q would retain its previous value okay and uh, the major difference is enable is not a sensitivity list only when the clock is high if enable circuit is enabled during that time then only q gets d that's it okay it's like a behavior of an and gate both clock should be high and enable should be high then only q gets d that means data gets registered okay this is somewhat we have learned about sequential circuits or flip flops okay now let us see how can we how we can describe latches in our designs okay i think uh, this is okay uh, what's a latch okay latch is a transparent okay but device whenever there is a clock is asserted means clock is high during all the time uh, this latch is asserted that means Uh, input is connected to the output as long as clock is high input is getting connected to the output when clock is not high q remembers its previous value okay that's the meaning of a latch okay now how do we design a uh, define latch now you see the difference between latch and a flip flop whereas a flip flop was edge sensitive okay either pause edge of the clock neg edge of the clock and this latch if we see the description we only see it as a clock 
and in the sensitivity list you will also see the uh, symbol d okay uh, d is the input and clock is the sequential clock okay. now whenever clock is asserted clock goes high then q follows d so latch is transparent when clock is one simply defined otherwise q would retain its previous value okay that is where we need otherwise we are not specifying right behavior that is why a memory element is required what otherwise otherwise you will have to remember previous value that's why a memory element is being inferred in the output okay this point will anyhow cover in the later stages but now let us observe various description styles in very long how do we define latches uh, synchronous reset asynchronous reset with enable signal all these things isn't it easy okay now let us summarize okay so all the sequential statements are embedded in an always block the sequential block is triggered with a change in the sensitivity list we know this the signals that we are assigning in the always block must be declared as registers and if you want to infer memory elements that means flip flops latches you need to use non blocking assignment and you will not find continuous assignment statement inside always block okay so where do we find these continuous assignment blocks assign statements outside the always never inside the always please remember this okay now in a module we can have more than one always block now we see uh, one always block two always blocks and one continuous assignment statement okay and uh, uh, this what is it doing okay now this always statement and all these statements execute concurrently that means what they they are working simultaneously this is independent from this this is independent from this and all the three are working simultaneously and so all the three are active at a time okay now at the positive of the clock means as soon as you see this and this you should understand these are a set of flip flops based on the why we are calling set because these are vectors otherwise it would have been a single flop okay here you can infer set of flops this would be a wire right because it's continuously changing when our special changes normal changes that's why it's a wire and uh, this always block is also a clocked block and it is triggered with the positive edge of the clock and uh, q gets normal when positive edge of the clock happens so this would and this is different from this so this would so two sets of flip flops we would uh, see in the output okay So one more difference you see the assignments in the always block are non blocking assignments whereas the assignments are using simply assign okay this is the difference between them and this would infer memory elements this would always infer combinational logic or it is a simply a wire in this case it just with the negation it's it's a, with a set of not gates correct so now we have seen all these things now let us uh, come to basic question of why do these kind of uh, statements are inferring flip flops in the output okay that's the basic understanding we need to have we are telling as a law, as a ro uh, rule of thumb that you use non blocking assignments to realize sequential elements but why is it so if we if we if we ask that question uh, the answer is very simple okay now we are saying uh, clock rises right q is getting d what 
you should have for all other values of clock shouldn't it remember its previous value yes that is what is putting memory element in the output okay i am defining its behavior for only rising edge of the clock for all other values of clock i don't have a uh, drive for this queue right so it should get it should retain its previous value when it 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 wants to retain its previous value there should be memory in the realization otherwise it retain its previous value that's why we are saying this kind of statements always would infer in infer flip flops or memory elements in the output okay not because it has been declared as a register okay that difference uh, i hope all of you are understanding so the value of q is preserved for all other values of clock apart from rising only q is getting d only at the rising edge of the clock okay now this would make all our clear okay now see do you think this circuit is going to infer any memory elements we are using non blocking assignments inside and the sensitivity list we see there is no clock and for all the possible combinations of inv we are assigning a valid value to result okay so if inv is 1 result is complement of data if otherwise for all other values of inv result is data itself so for all other combinations of inv or the result is getting drive for all combinations so this would certainly result in a combinational logic okay. sequential logic we have if inv is 1 result is complement of data if inv is 0 result is same as data so this certainly is a combinational block not a sequential block so uh, you may get conf or you should get can to see this kind of non blocking assignments uh, the meaning of which we would uh, still see uh, only one non blocking assignment you see you will not understand it when more than one non blocking assignments are there the blocking and non blocking assignment behavior differs okay that we are going to uh, look at in our further slides so for time being you see this always block is sensitive not to block it's not sensitive to clock it is sensitive to inv and data that means all the inputs it is listening to and for all the combinations of inv result is getting a drive okay there is no need to remember uh, any other combination for which result is not defined okay that's why it is resulting in a combinational logic okay let's cover uh, what's the difference between blocking and non blocking assignments okay now you see uh, in then always block uh, a is being assigned 01 binary 0 and b is being assigned a okay and in an, these are non blocking assignments in another always block what we have is blocking assignments a is getting uh, 01 and b is getting a what is the difference okay now this we know because the blocking statements they are executed sequentially that means one after the other only after finishing this statement this statement gets to execution that means a gets assigned with 01 and b gets assigned with 01 because a is being assigned again to b so a b will have same values at the end of this thing okay now when we come to blocking assignments it is like you do everything okay you do continuously do all the things you you parse all the statements okay a is less than or equal to uh, 01 uh, binary 01 means is assignment will happen immediately no it's a non blocking assignment that means it won't wait 
it won't wait for this assignment to happen. It will it will remember that okay, I'll have to assign to pick B01 to A. Okay, let, let me remember that. And B will get value of A. What is the value of A? Value of A is the previous value of A, whatever A was holding previously, not the value that it should get. Okay. Now when these assignments would happen at the end when when it when it encounters this end or at the end of this simulation cycle these assignments will happen first everything would be passed then the assignment would happen okay so b need not be to be 0 1 why because we are assigning previous value of b so you sample and you assign at the end things are sampled here okay 2b01 is sampled a is sampled and kept when is the assignment is happening assignment is happening at the end of simulation cycle okay, that's um, b need not be equal to a what will be the value of b the previous value of a would be assigned to b that's the difference between blocking and non blocking Now, uh, let us see with some more examples, understand this further. Okay. Now, initially, let us assume all the values of uh, variables are zero or all the signals are reset to zero. Okay. And now, A changes to one. When A changes to one, because this always block is sensitive to all the signals, uh, all the statements would be executed because A has changed its value. When A has changed its value, what is the value of P? P is 1 ended with 0. That is 1. What is C? 1 ended with 0. That is C is 0. What is S? C 1. 1 XR with C in. C in uh, all the signals are 0. Uh, 0 and 1, it is 1. What is C out? G ended with P and C in. P is 1, C in is 0, its value is 0, or 0 because Z is 0, C out is 0. So, how are we doing it? We are doing it one by one. Okay. After we have we have stored the result of this statement into P, then we are going to execution of this statement. After this statement is finished, we are going to execution of this statement and after execution of all the statements we are going to end and at the end s is one okay and all the things are updated order in which they have been declared okay if you change the order values may change because some of the variables updated and you may be using updated values Okay, these are sequential statements. So the value would change as the order of the statement as statements change. Okay. Now, if we use the same statements in a non-blocking assignment, then what is the difference? Okay. Let us assume all the variables are initially signals are initially cleared, and uh, would this assignment happen immediately? No this operation is carried out value is held operation carried out value is held operation is carried out value is held operation is carried out value is held when does the assignment happen assignment happen only at when you encounter end or at the end of current simulation cycle okay so what is the value a x or b value is one okay this won't get assigned immediately. This would be assigned at the end of the simulation cycle. So P won't get one. P would get one at the end of simulation cycle. Okay, A and B, A is one and B is zero. So G gets zero. Okay, and P is what previously P, when P is there here, it is not the P that got updated because updation happens at the end of the simulation cycle. P would still hold its previous value, that is zero. Zero, 
zero. So S is zero. In the previous case, S was one. And C out you see G is what? G its previous value. G is zero and P is zero. zero. So C out becomes zero. So S is being signed at end of simulation cycle. So P is still zero. So the result is still zero. I hope this makes sense. So uh, if you ask all the assignments would concurrently happen and how the statements would be evaluated with all the present values of all these statements would be considered for getting next state. So what is present state? Next state. Present state going to next state, right? That is what is a flip flop. That is what is a memory, correct? That is where you are getting memory elements in the output when you are using non-blocking assignments because you will have to take present values and in the rising edge of the clock or the clocked blocks, you would be assigning them to their corresponding variables as per your logic. Okay, so let us summarize the uh, rules for signal assignments. Okay, if you see blocked always block and a non-blocking assignment, what is the logic that we are going to infer? It's a synchronous sequential logic. And if we see assignment statements, then that would be realized as a combinational logic. Okay, very simple, right? Now. Everybody can understand where is a uh, sequential circuit, where is a combinational circuit, or which logic would result in uh, sequential blocks, or which logic would result in combinational logic, logic. Then you can describe your hardware better. So uh, another way to define combinational logic is to use always blocks. See, we have you we have defined muxes, priority logics, k if else, and k statements inside always block to infer what combinational logic. And uh, why the first difference is always block was listening to all the inputs and the assignments that we were using were blocking assignments. Okay. And one caution that we should exercise is from multiple assignment statements. We should never assign to same variable. Okay, that means there is a race. You are trying to assign one value from one this thing, one value from another concurrent block. Then, if a same signal is getting from two different concurrent assigned statements, then uh, obviously it would be indeterminate. You cannot determine. Okay, there is a race. Okay, that is called. So the caution has to be exercised there. Now let's go to uh, finite state machines. Okay, how do you define a finite state machine? It's not an exhaustive coverage of FSMs. We are what we are looking is how do we describe uh, FSMs inside Verilog? Okay, from our previous digital design background, we know that FSM would consist of state space where it is going to store the state and states would be processed okay and uh, uh, states are manipulated to derive net and uh, states are manipulated to get outputs okay based on the state okay now how do you see a state how do you how can you define a state now you whenever you go to traffic lights okay you look at the uh, traffic lights if it is red that means what will have to wait. That is the state of traffic lights. When it is green, you move forward. OK, that means what? When in the red state, you are waiting. When in the green state, you are moving. OK, that's the meaning of state. OK, and uh, in order to store the state, you need memory elements. And the next state depends on the present state, right? After it, uh, yellow comes, then green comes. So, and there are inputs like how, after how much time the signal has to change. So the next state or the next signal value depends on the present signal and the inputs that you are giving. Okay, and the, similarly, 
the output also depends on the state okay you cannot abruptly go from one signal to other okay red to red is not possible okay so uh, output also depends on the state that you are in if output is changing based on the state alone uh, this kind of effect is called moore machine okay if output logic is changing its value based on the present state and the present inputs then this state machine is called moore machine okay um, discussion of miele and moore machines uh, is out context for this topic uh, for the sake of can we, uh, the, for the sake of instant reference i have made a uh, passing remark here i hope one of you understand these differences so what do we see in an fsa next state logic memory element and output logic can can you say what are memory elements or what are combination elements okay now that's very easy now see the blocks that are getting triggered by the clock are the memory element are the registers which store the state uh, the ones which are being driven by certain inputs and that are generating certain outputs are certainly combination blocks so the next stage logic and the output logic here are combination blocks and the state logic is the actual memory element so let us see how do we model sequential circuits inside very now okay now let's take an example in order to understand these things better okay let's take an example that there is a uh, continuous signal clock and you want to divide it by three okay what you should do okay so one easy method is to count the activity of the clock okay after three it just you generate one activate in the output so on that makes and divide by 3 sir right so in the so you are counting so initially when when it is reset actually when it is reset this this says that after reset this is the default state reset this circuit comes into state s0 and upon the next clock edge it goes to s1 and whenever it receives another activity of the clock it goes to state s2 and uh, after s2 it goes back again to s0 asserting the output okay that means you are counting three clock states 1 2 3 that can be put in the description now want to store two states we need two bits okay now, this fsmc divided by 3 fsm has clock input and uh, reset input there are two inputs one is upon the reset what is the default state the system should be brought to known state upon the reset that's why we are using a reset signal and output is q output uh, has to be generated based on the inputs okay now these are parameters what are parameters parameters we are declaring for readability these are like hash defines okay or enumerated values inside c if you compare it with c parameter s0 is 0 parameter s1 is 1 parameter s2 is 2 means whenever we encounter this it would get replaced these values internally okay so the state we have to remember that's why uh, it has been uh, put as a register okay and these are what state and next state are temporary variable output is q we have to generate output q based on its present state and present inputs okay only one input is their clock Okay, for this divide by three example upon every clock edge we are going to into the next state now how are we generating the 
memory elements okay if this always block one block is for register okay what what should be registered inside this if you see now we are defining this block okay uh, next state logic gets a state gets next state okay or uh, on the active edge of the clock this next state becomes present state that is what we are doing okay now initially up reset what is state by this always clock is due to positive edge of the clock and it is it has also has a asynchronous reset whenever reset button is pressed um, the state uh, is brought to a known state that means by default the system comes to yes not state otherwise what it is doing state is assigned with the next state value okay state gets next state how next state what is next state we haven't defined it okay how next state changes next state changes on the present state and the present inputs right that we have to define yet okay we are step by step we are going now we'll see next state logic how do we generate next state logic next state logic is generated based on the present state okay now you see let's go back to the diagram next state logic is derived from the present state and present inputs okay that's what is driving the state okay that's the next state logic now we are trying to define this logic in the very long what is the next state in order to uh, define next state next state is what next state is a combinational block it's not a sequential block that's why it has always at the red star and key state when you are in state 0 next state is going to be s1 when you are in state s1 next state is going to be s2 when you are in state s2 if state is s2 next state is going to be s0 by default next state would be s0 why did we keep this in order to avoid inference of latches okay or you can even before here you can put uh, next state is equal to s0 Either you can use default statement or you can assign default value to next state. Thus, you will avoid uh, unnecessary latches in your combinational logic. Okay, so next state logic is done. Now, what is the output logic? After we have counted when we are in S2, uh, going to S0 at the active edge of the flip flop, then we will have to set the output to. Okay, when we are going to. Uh, assert output we are asserting output when state is in it's not state okay one output is asserted when you are in yes not again when you come back to yes not state again you will assert the output okay otherwise it's going to retain its previous one okay output logic is what it's continuously listening so it's a, it's again a statement Assigned statement means it's a combination logic only. Okay. Uh, now you see this is a, a different kind of uh, little bit. Uh, it's kind of if if state is equal to yes not, then assign q is equal to one. Otherwise, assign q is equals to zero. That's the meaning of it. Okay. Uh, you tell me this is a melee or a more machine. Obviously because output is dependent on present state only output is only it's not dependent on input that's why it is a uh, now let's see at one shot okay now if you look at one shot this divide by three fsm has inputs clock and reset output q output q is asserted after the three clock inputs right so in order to generate that logic we need to store two stages two states okay two uh, two states or three states remember that a two bit 
uh, state variables are required. Okay, and readability we have uh, declared all those states as parameters. Okay, now you you have uh, state logic or the state memory elements inside your logic. You have next state logic. You have output logic. Okay, so every FSM can be divided into this way. Okay, so what is it going to do? Basically, it is going to change its state. Okay, so when is it going to uh, on every clock edge? State to next state. What is next state? Next state logic is next state depends on what present state and present inputs. Present inputs are clock. So only input is clock here. So we are not considering. And if you are in state S yes, not, next state is S1. If you are in state S1, yes, next state is S2. If you are in state S2, next state is S0. Yes, so that's the next state logic. And what's the output logic? Output is assigned one. Uh, when state is S not, otherwise it is assigned zero. So this is how you can uh, describe uh, your FSMs inside. Very log. The crux here is you will have to break your design into next state logic and what how many state elements are required and what is the output logic. If you can break this way then any bigger FSM can be attempted and it's. We are using parameters here uh, to. The code more readable. So this uh, actually uh, uh, topic for today. So what we have learned, we have learned a lot. We have seen how we can describe sequential circuits in Verilog. We have seen uh, when does always statement memorize, okay? And we have also seen how always block can be used to define combinational logic also. That means, and the difference between blocking and non-blocking assignments, and uh, how do we write FSMs or how do we describe FSMs inside Verilog? Now the session is open for questions. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask me. Always at the red star, I have covered it in uh, one session, which means that it is sensitive to all the inputs. Okay. The blocks which have always at the red star are the combinational blocks, which are used to define next state logic and output logic. If you from my presentation. The next state logic and output logic will have always block at the at the red star. Means it is sensitive to all the inputs. Which holding value see the memory elements are holding values because you are defining its behavior only at the rising edge of the clock or the active edge of the clock for your sake which could be rising edge or the negative edge for all other values of clock you are not defining what is going to be there in its output so it has to remember its previous value that is where the the uh, elements which are defined with 
blocked always blocked inferring memory elements in the output hope this clears in the last assignment statement it's like state equal to equal to s not this always will evaluate to either true or false if state is in s not then it is going to uh, result in one if it's not if state is not s not this always evaluate to see that's why q is getting values always that's why this is simply a combinational circuit either 0 or 1 0 or 1 0 or 1 when is that s not is going to become uh, 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 state is going to become s yes not after three clock cycles right we are counting after every three clock cycles state is going to be s yes not that's why the output signal is always a divide by three signal makes sense yeah assign is used once because it's, it's its usage is limited only we have to see what is the state only if it is s not then only we will have to assert q otherwise it will be zero only so that's why assert is used only once assign is used only once either you could also write this using always block like always at star if state is equals to s not then q is equals to 1 else q is equals to 0 you could put that way also instead of assign you could you could write another always block So what I suggest is you people can take a different uh, uh, FSM examples, one with Moore style, one with Miele style. Then practice all those things in very long. Then these things would naturally uh, be understood. So crux of this presentation is uh, difference between blocking and non-blocking assignment. And uh, when a always block would infer a combinational logic, when a uh, always block would infer sequential logic, if it is clocked and assignments are non-blocking, you should always be sure that it would infer a sequential logic. So if you can capture that, it is um, you have uh, captured the fundamentals of Verilog. Now you are ready to handle any any bigger okay. test benches. There is a separate session for test benches, and uh, on Thursday we'll have a de detailed session on test benches, and then where you will get how you can uh, um, write various. Test benches for various logics you have developed. We have covered a little bit in the beginning uh, how does uh, taxonomy of test bench. We will cover more in that session. A detailed session will follow.
one more difference that you will have to observe is though we are declaring some variables as registers, they are not going to be your physical memory elements in the output. Okay, based on how you are synthesizing. Okay, this is always depends. Okay, that I hope people have captured that difference. How asynchronous signals can be declared, how synchronous signals can be used, and output is always registered in always blocks. Assignments would be uploaded very soon, and uh, you give a very good hand at them. And people who uh, do the assignments will only will get the certificate, and we'll give proper time for solving the assignments. Okay, if there are no further questions, um, we will end the session here. Uh, thank you all for participating. Uh, we will cover in the session test benches. Thank you very much. Participants kept on the letter rose of cotization on the update and rose cotization. Hello, brother. I've been with Okay, Sanya Sundagna.